What do bioremediation and the COVID-19 pandemic have to do with one another? Welcome to the EnviroTalk program. Hey, I'm Travis Bowman. I'm the president of Enviro Workshops. Uh, we train environmental professionals all over the globe. And um, we've been fortunate enough to see about 20,000 environmental professionals register on six different continents, 20 different countries. And we've hosted about 400 workshops around the globe. And so check out our website. You can see enviroworkshops.com. You can see a little bit more about who our, our speakers are, our train that uh, train environmental professionals, more about our sponsors and their technologies uh, that they present on. Uh, but also, now that we've gone around the globe, we're actually hosting a global summit uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina. We'll have speakers from around the globe that'll be presenting on what the accelerating trends that they're seeing in their neck of the woods, whether it's Australia, or Asia, Europe, South America. And so check out our, our other website is envirosummit.com for a little bit more details. That'll be coming up in September 1st, 2nd, and 3rd in Charlotte, North Carolina. Well, today's guest that we have with us, uh, Kent Armstrong with TerraStrike, he's actually uh, been speaking at our workshops across the country, uh, and he's known for his bioremediation technologies in the industry, and uh, he's used uh, uh, his bioremediation products all over the globe, uh, a number of different countries. I, I can't remember all of them, but I know he's uh, used his products, whether across North America and even internationally. So, Kent, welcome to the EnviroTalk program. Thank you, Travis. It's a pleasure. Yeah. So, tell us a little bit more. I, I, I always say that our, at our workshops, you're probably one of the most passionate people I've ever met with the bioremediation. And I love that about you because uh, you, ha you, I mean, you just as exude, really. Anybody that's been to our workshops and seen your presentation, they, can, they know it's like, it's just kind of like flowing out of you. You are very passionate about bioremediation. I love that. So tell us a little bit more about your all's technology and uh, really how it's used to help clean up some of the contamination that we have in soil and groundwater. Uh, well, we at TerraStrike develop biostimulation additives, and our additives are designed to enhance, our whole purpose is to enhance the native microbial populations that Mother Nature's already put in the ground. Um, one of the, uh, our technique or our process leverages millions of years of Mother Nature's experience. Uh, everything we do is anaerobically. Uh, um, for petroleum hydrocarbon sites, as well as, you know, the chlorinated sites. RDX sites, PCB sites, etc. cetera. Um, but we're, we're working on um, formalizing, I guess you will, or confirming uh, what we believe is a new advancement in, in bioremediation, in situ bioremediation, that's been well known throughout the, the, the above ground world uh, for, for decades, in the wastewater treatment plant world, in the, in the medical industry world, um, in, in dental world, uh, that being, and people who have heard me talk, I get all excited about biofilms. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we're trying to enhance. What we do is we, we're nourishing the subsurface, not just one species, not just one thing, not just with one compound, not with a chemical, but what we're trying to do is organically nourish the subsurface so that the, the naturally occurring microbial populations can be have stresses eliminated and do exactly that which mother nature designed them to do uh, extremely efficiently uh, and extremely sustainably mm -hmm. um, and, and we go beyond what current thought of the capabilities of bioremediation are are you working on more hydrocarbon uh, projects or chlorinated solvents or t talk to us a little bit about the contamination that you guys are typically working on uh, initially, the majority of our sites were dry cleaner sites, chlorinated sites. Uh, I started off years ago with a, a group, uh, several may know GZA out of uh, New England. Um, and, and most of the sites with my colleague, Richard Schaffner, uh, were uh, manufacturing dry cleaner sites, et cetera, uh, where chlorinated solvents were prevalent. Uh, more recently, uh, up until very recently, um, petroleum hydrocarbon, legacy petroleum hydrocarbon sites were a, a real big source of, uh, of our work, uh, especially remote locations, because everything, all of our activities are passive. 
Uh, we, we help eliminate above ground equipment. We just try to get mother nature to, to get her systems, which were designed billions years ago to operate just like they would in a wastewater treatment plant or a stream or in the, the plaque of your teeth. We're in effect establishing in situ bioreactors. Right. Yeah, that's good. Well, let's talk about the pandemic, the, the <laughs> elephant in the room, right? As they yeah. say, actually, I had one, of, one of our speakers we had on the, it's so funny. Uh, this was a couple of weeks ago and I was doing an interview with him and he actually had an elephant on his, uh, on the wall <laughs> behind him. And he said, so let's talk about the you know, elephant in the room. <laughs> but, you know, listen, I mean, COVID-19 has shut down the world. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's crazy how this crisis has affected, I don't know, 180, everybody, everybody, 185 countries or whatever. And anyway, so in, in light of the crisis that we're dealing with, what, what are you all doing there at TerraStrike? Um, matter of fact, we should throw out your website right now, TerraStrike.com. Is that right? Um, yep. yep. www.terrastrike.com. So, with a Y. With a Y. With That's a y. right. Thank so, you very so, much. Ch so check Only out. because it looks a whole lot cooler than an I. That's, you know. <laughs> Um, but, but talk to us, what are you doing in the midst of this pandemic uh, to meet your customer needs and, and that sort of thing? Well, one, it's dramatically impacted how uh, I met my customers. Um, as you know, Travis, I love face-to-face. -face. I'm an old timer. I'm an old schooler. I uh, was recalcitrant, if you will, to yeah. the new way. I, that web thing, I still don't know if it's going to catch on. But, um, you know... It, I've had to reevaluate how I address my, how I get in contact with my customers. How can we take this horrific uh, situation and take some of the silver lining and learn new ways uh, to do our business and, and new ways to uh, maybe even more sustainably and um, better for the, the, the global uh, um, environment itself by, reducing our travels and maybe doing more of this type of communication. Um, it, it's, I'm three miles outside of nowhere in New Hampshire. So we're, we're, blessed. <laughs> yeah, we're blessed in that isolation is something we do on a regular basis. Um, so that's been easy, but it's, um, it, it has made, I miss travel as much as I hate it at times at the airports. I do miss travel, but in terms of projects, what we've done, yeah. it, it did impact early on. Uh, when the virus for, first was hitting China, it impacted my production rates. It put some production rates back because our manufacturer in Canada was asked by Chinese manufacturers, can you make this stuff for us? Because we can't right now. So my one, two, five skid orders were dwarfed by thousand skid orders. And so right. I, was put on the, I was put way back in the queue. Um, in terms of transportation, uh, Th those issues, production issues are no longer a factor, but in, in terms of delivery, that's become the newest issue. Uh, a little bit more scrutiny, a little bit more time at the border. I, I am coming out of Canada, um, so it takes a little bit longer to, if I'm coming to a, a, a project here in the States. Um, uh, it takes a little bit longer to get across the border. Uh, and then in terms of delivery actually at the site, uh, just had this uh, come up a couple days ago. Uh, had a scheduled uh, facility the material he was going to where they're doing the work. Big warehouse, tons of bays, tons of docks, tons of forklifts. Receiving the material was, uh, was, a no, was no problem. Mm -hmm. um, but the COVID issue shut down the facility. Uh -huh. So the consultant then calls me and says, hey, you know, I don't have a forklift. I don't have a dock. You know, do you have a lift gate? And I said, well, that's going to, we're going to have to reschedule. It's going to add some costs, et cetera, et cetera. Can you just live load it? Can I just get the truck there? And you guys then just offload it live, you know, take you about right. an hour, you, you know, be good exercise. Right. Um, sure. 40 my, 45 minutes later, I get a phone call saying, you know, we don't want to do that. And I'm thinking, well, why not? They don't want to be next to each other uh, right. because of the spacing issues. They didn't want to do a bucket brigade where they were having to, within close, close proximity, sure, be passing you know thirty three pound bags to each other. Yeah. So we end, So what I'm doing now is we are tarping everything, everything that comes, everything comes shrink wrapped. Every any, anyways. Right. But we're now putting an extra tarp over all skids that are going to be had to left 
be left outside yeah. uh, to, to help protect it from the weather. That's good. That's impacting everything. It um, is impacting everything. You're right. Uh, um, but you, know, but you guys are doing stuff to still be able to meet the needs of the customer to make sure that you're uh, supporting them and understanding there, there got to be, we've got a shift in how we're delivering product and getting it out to, to them. Yeah, so, we don't so. have any issues. We're still here. We're still delivering. We're still here. Um, and I have to actually say that, you know, proposal opportunities have kind of picked up. I think people are cleaning up their desks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, finding these things under their desk, you know, oh my gosh, yeah, I got, I should probably look into that about now. Yeah. So hopefully that turns into work, but I, there, there, there's a lot of discussion going on. So our industry, in some respects, a large majority of our work is outside. So we're blessed. Yeah. Um, as long as the market holds up and as long as property continues to transact, I think we'll continue to see work. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah, I was talking with one of our other sponsors the other day who speaks, and uh, he said, you know, pollution is what we do in, in our industry. <laughs> when it comes to wearing a mask or, or gearing up with HazWap or right. training, my gosh, we've been doing, this is what we do. Right. Like, we so are, we're used uh, and, to deal with contamination. I mean, you know. That's another comes, thing. You know, walking into the brewery or walking into the grocery store to get your, uh, you know, curbside pickups. Um, I do watch a lot of people grab the handle of a door and then put their gloves on yeah. or, and then take their gloves off and then pick up exactly what they just got, you know, put it in their trunk, you know, to move it to a different location. Um, not knowing to go inside out, you know, maybe not knowing to wear two gloves at the same time. So you always got to clean one underneath. Uh, we are, and, and we are lucky. We have some material in the back, you know, back supply room that if, if needed. Again, I'm not in an area where the only time we need to wear masks now um, would be if you're at the grocery store or something like that. Right. And we rarely, we rarely see people. So it's, yeah, uh, you're, I've, you're got, I've got a thousand acres behind me that I can go hiking for six hours and not see a soul. Man. So it's pretty cool. I got to come to your Bless. place. Yeah. It's so, neat. so talk to us about the bioremediation. What, what do the bioremediation and the, and the pandemic have to do with each other? Talk to me about that. Well, interestingly, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm not an expert and I'm not going to speak to being an expert and, uh, you and I have had our conversations. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I think we're in a race right now. There's a lot of us in the shoebox, and the dense, it's all about density. Uh, when it comes to microbes and when it comes to viruses and when it comes to things like it's all in ecological systems and just basic biological ecological systems. It's all about densities. Yeah. And uh, however it started, you know, let's say it did naturally occur. Well, that part of the world, huge densities, people on top of people, animals on top of people, you know, weather, it's winter, closed conditions. It was just perfect for a virus to adapt. Mm -hmm. Well, in that, and, and now it's, ada it's, it's adapting. Um, and over billions and billions of years, that's all viruses. That's all Mother Nature does. Is she adapts. She she takes advantage of situations and adapts to them. Sometimes we benefit from those adaptations. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, this time we're not benefiting. We're not benefiting. We have to be the energy source she's going after right now, and it and she's. We're in a race of evolution in a sense. Can can we scientifically outpace the ability of this thing to evolve? Yeah, the enemy. The so, enemy. Yeah. Can we outsmart this thing? And mm -hmm. she's got a hell of a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. Flipping it to what we do, you know, we're not viruses. We're going after microbes. Viruses do. Vi everybody communicates. Mm -hmm. um, but in a sense, when we can create, when you're in an in-situ situation at a gas station, and there's this huge mass of organic compounds or you're at a chlorinated site and you got this huge mass of organic halides in a basically a stream, subsurface stream, much more complicated than an above ground river. One of the lacking compounds now, one of the stresses, the things that prevent microbes from performing are nutrients. And one of the major components of our additives is a proprietary nutrient formulation, which basically nourishes the ecosystem, creates that prime environment mm -hmm. so that microbes can then, boom, just evolve and adapt right. collectively 
to this source of energy, be it a halide or be it a petroleum hydrocarbon, be it something I respire, be it something I eat. Mm -hmm. Kind of in the same sense as what's going on right now. This guy, this thing's going nuts. It's, it's adapting incredibly well, mm -hmm. incredibly well. Um, but there's microbes inherently in the ground that have been there forever, whether they're dormant or active, waiting to be unleashed, good mm -hmm. and bad. And so what we see at our sites is by enhancing the groundwater, the saturated soil, the subsurface ecosystem conditions, we see microbial, microbial growth, we see microbial bloom, but then we also see enhanced solubilization of your smear zone. If you get these bugs going, they're gonna wash that material out into the groundwater where it's available. Mm -hmm. Then they're gonna either eat it or breathe it at incredible rates. With at chlorinated sites, we're getting two to three order of magnitude destruction rates of mass, total chlorinated mass, completely complete biotransformation in right. months, not years. Wow. Um, Which is profound. One for, some, for somebody who doesn't know this, that, that is profound. Standard literature says bioremediation with an organic compound is going to give you a couple orders of magnitude destruction. Right. We're routinely seeing two to three, if not more. Wow. We're seeing it in months, not years. We wow. took a, there's an article coming out soon. Uh, you can go to my website. It'll be published, I think, in a few days. Took a dry cleaner. Everybody's heard me talk about it. We've taken mm -hmm. a dry cleaner in Ontario uh, in four years and on the tech. It's now yep. an operating grocery store. Scottish yep. grocery store. If you ever want haggis, I can tell you where to go. Yep, yep. Um, you're going to need scotch with that as well. <laughs> <laughs> and a cigar maybe a cigar and a cigar <laughs> maybe you know they drown out the, the flavor of haggis um but um no it. we see incredible incredible performance rates and yeah. it's it's a new concept what we're trying to relate i'm working with professors at ucla i don't know if i'm allowed the name drop but yeah, dr no. Um, I probably shouldn't. I, yeah, I won't probably shouldn't. Drop. Yeah, um, I know you had some extensive conversations with the EPA. I was at one I'm of our workshops. The, right? Working with yeah. the EPA, and I'm looking forward drop, to working with you folks were, uh, at, at yeah. Rutgers. Yeah. There's a bunch of us out there. Also with the University of Tulsa, there's a bunch of us out there that yeah. are on this crest, this wave. This is a new dogma. This is a new yeah. way of looking at in situ remediation, the enhancement of biofilm. Yeah. If we can make biofilm bugs can perform at rates um, we never thought imaginable never thought imaginable right. my analogy is without a biofilm they're using an abacus yeah. yeah in a biofilm they got a laptop yeah and just imagine the order of magnitude increased ability to adapt to evolve with something that changes their entire uh, um um uh, what's the word? Generational change yeah. in hours. Right. We take decades. Exactly. Yeah. You know, yep. they do it in minutes and hours. Yeah. So days, minutes, hours, you know, but um, so it's fun. It's a lot. It's a lot of fun. And I'm a jack of all trades, master of none. I've been in the industry 40 <laughs> some odd years. I started off as a turd herder for LA County Sanitation District. A turd herder. <laughs> yeah, wastewater treatment plant operator. I'm sorry. I'm getting a little too relaxed. <laughs> But, um, I love it. I love it. It's funny. <laughs> but I've, I've seen a whole lot of things and I yeah. used to dig a whole lot of big holes and I've torn down a lot of big buildings. Yeah. I've never seen anything. And I used to poo poo this. It was magic foo foo dust. You know, my colleague, mm -hmm. I'd say, Hey Richard, bring your magic foo foo dust. And I'd walk away and yeah. go tear down another building. Right. When we first started working together 15 years ago with this, when we first started it, um, we were getting order of magnitude reductions where we would have to resample two or three times just to confirm to ourselves mm -hmm. the data we were seeing is real. Yeah. So I urge folks, just go to my website. Yep. Give me a chance. Give me yep. a chance. And, and I'll tell you, I, and you guys have heard me say this, who's ever been at my shows. I'll be the first one to say no. All I ask is for the opportunity to look at your site, look at your contaminant levels, look at your concern, yep. and see if we can help you. Yep. If I can't help you, I'll do all I can to direct you to somebody who can. So that yep. hopefully I become a resource, and over time, we come back, and if we can't play in this sandbox together, 
maybe we can come back someday later in a sandbox months down the road and, yeah, and with a different project or a different, with a different yeah. project and play again together. Um, and the website again, Terra Strike with a Y. With a Y, www.terrastrike.com. Um, there's a, a pilot study thingy we could talk about that allows you to test it on site for basically nothing. Nothing. Yeah, I love and, it. And um, also there's a questionnaire on there that if you have a site, and you want me to give you a swag estimate of what we're looking at to start mm -hmm. the discussion. It's an interactive forum, one page long, hit, fill it out, hit enter. It takes you a couple of minutes and within a day or two, I'll have some ideas for you. That's perfect. Hey, Kent, thank you so much for coming on our program today. I, as I hope the audience can see, you're a wealth of information and 40 years experience and you're Most of it you don't it. know. Most of it you don't need to know, but yeah. That's right. <laughs> well, thanks for coming on the program. I know you're busy. I appreciate your time. So thanks so much, Kent. We'll Thank you, you so much, show. folks. Everybody, everybody be safe. Be All safe. Right. Wash your hands. That's right. Wave. That's and now right. I know, now I hear you can't even pet somebody's dog. So wow. I know. So just, just wave and say hello and be safe. Smile right. and wave, boys. Yeah. Smile and wave. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Th Kent. Have a thanks, good day. Thanks, Travis. Bye-bye. Yep.